That was a lot more exciting than I was expecting. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Floyd. I hope some of you know me, and if you don't, I hope that you know me now and by the end of the talk. Uh, first off, thank you to Colin and Alain Daniel for inviting me to come and do this. I'm excited, but stilted right now. Um, Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, frequently received emails, which is something I've always thought would make for a really interesting subject matter, not for myself, but basically for anybody. Um, I think it's really interesting to see what people get emailed about. I think I'm kind of nosy. Um, Picture on this front cover, under the lower third, is uh, my real life Indie Mega Booth Gmail Google app inbox. Um, complete with bespoke wallpaper. Um, it's a panorama shot of Thingvellir National Park in Iceland. I took it earlier this year. If you learn nothing from this talk, please leave with a strong recommendation that you should add a wallpaper to your Gmail theme. Um, it really helps when you're looking at your email all the time to have something serene. All right. Let me see if this thing works. Great. So why do I get all these emails? Good question. I've Four leading theories. Number one is that I'm one half of Team Indie Megabooth. I've put a little website here, IndieMegabooth.com. That's our website. Part of the smallest possible definition of a team, which is two people. Uh, quick to respond to queries. I'm experienced in the art of exhibiting games. And I know a lot about throat lozenges, is what that means. I don't have any throat lozenges with me today, because I'm not experienced in the art of talks. Um, I'm also the co-founder, very recently, of Indies Workshop, indiesworkshop.com. Um, second smallest possible team definition, which is three. That's two plus one. Uh, <laughs> contributor to the Seattle Indie scene. We're opening a game developer co-working space in Seattle. If any of you happen to be Seattleites. All right, five people. Um, or any of you think you might go to Seattle sometime. Please go to this website and find our address, and then come in and say hi. Um, third reason I get a lot of emails is people are bored. Um, I've included the link to iambored.com, which is a website I used to visit when I was 14, and I checked it out just before this talk. It still looks like it did when I was 14. It's not a very good website. But we all get lonely sometimes, and sometimes it's good to email people and kind of hear what they have to say. Uh, accident. I've used the mail.yahoo.com domain here, which is because when you get spam, it always seems to be a Yahoo account. Um, I have received at least one email on accident that wasn't spam. Um, it was incredibly in-depth information on a company's shareholders. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you who it was, but it was definitely not something I was expecting to see. And then I got an email afterwards that said, can you please delete that email? And I think I did. <laughs> All right. Audience participation segment. This was my... like talk 101 way of trying to make this work. It's been a pretty eventful morning. We've had some pretty good times. Let's get some blood flowing. Everyone stand up for me, please. Yeah, that sigh. Ugh. All right. That's an incredibly good turnout. I didn't think anyone would actually stand up. Um, I used this graph. This is the only picture that I Googled for this talk, um, which is your week and then a green slice of physical activity, and then whatever is what you do beyond that. Okay, so let's see. It's very bright for me to see this, but I can kind of get a sense of where you all are. Um, stay standing if you work in games. All right, great. You're at the right summit. 
Stay standing if you've shown your game at a convention. If you've shown it at a thing, then you win. You can stay standing. It's also not winning because you just stand longer than everybody else. But um, okay, now stay standing if you've ever been in Indie Mega Booth. Thin the herd. Here we go. Oh, that's better. If I block that light, I can see everyone. Okay. Nice job. Okay. Uh, stay standing for a second. Um, everyone, look at these people who are standing right now. Um, I'm not here to tell you why the Mega Booth is really cool, but I'm hope hoping they'll give you like an honest feedback on it. Um, that's the final stage, is like being in the Mega Booth. Um, today we're going to talk about the first few stages. <laughs> today I'm going to read you my emails about how you get there. Um, you can all sit down now. Thanks for helping. That gives me good context. All right. So, what are these emails about? So I've included some numbers here. These were the search results. You can see the little tiny background of Iceland behind the numbers. Um, of the emails I received this year, most people want to talk about, we want to show our game with Indie Mega Booth. When do submissions open? Please put our game on the Steam Curator page. And can we bring Indie Mega Booth to our convention? Um, I'm hoping that the lack of numerical order has drived, like, driven some people crazy right now, but I ordered them this way because I think that's the most important to today to like the least important, except that I'm here at a convention. All right, uh, what do we got here? We want to show your game at Indie Mega Booth. We want you to do that as well. Um, our primary activity, if you don't know what we do, is to help developers show their games at conventions and stuff all over the world. Uh, surprise, surprise, this is the most common email that I receive because it's like the primary goal of what I'm doing. Uh, it's pretty good. It means that people know what we're doing and it's obviously good to know that they like that. The better news is that we want people to do that with us. Um, it's a very simple first step to doing so. Submit your game. Requires a functional build, doesn't have to be complete. A three minute video of gameplay, not a trailer. Raw gameplay footage, if you don't learn anything from today is something that doesn't have anything on it. It's just raw, pure gameplay footage. I don't know. No overlaid stuff. Does it have to be finished? No. Does it have to look great? No. Does it be interesting? Yes. Show potential? Hopefully. When do submissions open? This is a picture of some cats that my wife drew. <laughs> who are crowding around. I don't know if that's supposed to be an email service or a website with a large email me button. But anyway, submissions will open on Monday, which is two days from today. Um, yeah, that's a pretty easy one. Please put our game on the Steam Curator page. Curation. That's a fun one. If you email me this, it means that you didn't look at our curator page, which begs the question, why do you want to be on the page that you didn't look at? <laughs> I don't know what the answer to that is, and I'm not going to try to sort it out, but the day Steam launches creation system, uh, I think I noted here that I was eating a cheddar cheese sandwich. I remember it really vividly <laughs> because I panicked, like I'd never panicked before, because I never don't release games on Steam, so the stressful thing for me on Steam was, oh, a thing that I'm sort of semi-related to has just happened out of the blue, and now I have to do that. Um, I took two bites of the sandwich, I saw a tweet about it, not the sandwich, but Steam Curator page, and quickly dug into this chaotic, messy archive of spreadsheets that we have, and put together all of the games that we had, so this is a real true-to-life, as of, I don't know, four days ago, screenshot of the page, we have some followers. That follow button doesn't work here, but it will work on the page. Each one, as you can see, if you can't read it there, says showed at, and then a, whatever the show was, and a small description. It's pretty clear that that's what we're doing. The description of the thing says that our showcase has a bunch of games for you to check out. People don't seem to understand that, that these are games that have been in the mega booth. So, I hope that you can spread the word. Um, needless to say, if your game has shipped on Steam and you've been with us before, if you're one of those people who was standing, and now you're thinking, wait a minute, I don't know if I'm on that page, please go check, and if you're not, let me know, and I will get it added onto there. 
If you share with us first, you're automatically in there. It's pretty straightforward. Can we bring Indie Mega Booth to our convention? Yes, I hope. It's possible that some of you here today organize events, and maybe you've been wondering about the possibilities of having an Indie Mega Booth showcase at it. A um, couple of things to consider, which is general sort of advice that I would share from a developers that we work with perspective, perspective of me as a person who will decide if it makes sense to do that, and then, I don't know, another perspective that I, I'm blanking on what I would call it right now. Um, if you're going to run a, an event where you want people to show their games, it has to be useful for the developers that are showing the games. Um, that could be a whole range of things. Like here I have a bunch of pictures, the obvious statement, but um, so the top, let's go top left is GDC, and then the middle top is Slick Entertainment, local Vancouver developers. That's their booth at uh, PAX Prime this year. Uh, this one in the top right is the mega booth at PAX East two years ago or three years ago. Um, the bottom one there is myself and Kelly, who's my, my coworker, who's the owner of Indie Mega Booth. Uh, we gave a talk at South by Southwest two years ago. This was a showcase we did with uh, CBS Interactive, who you might know off as the people who do GameSpot and Giant Bomb and all those like huge game websites. I don't know how or why they decided that they wanted to work with us, but we were <laughs> really excited when they did. Um, then the bottom one here, which is terribly lit, but it's a photo I took myself, and I wanted to put at least one in that I took, um, is of EGX that we did in the UK. So all of these kind of cover a whole bunch of different reasons that you would do the thing. Um, GDC is not a good place to get fans to try out your game. At least not like lay people fans, like humans. You're going to have game people look at your game. Um, Obviously, the PAXs are probably the best place if you're looking for getting a lot of game people who aren't game people <laughs> to try out your games. Um, South By is like where we gave a talk. It would never have made any sense for us to show games there, as far as we were concerned. Um, the CBS thing was really cool because it got a bunch of people who didn't care about games. So like they were more excited about seeing the, the GameSpot celebrities that were at the event and then by proxy got to check out 20 games. I've just realized that Jesse Turner is in that picture wearing his green bandana, so I hope that you can spot that. And then EGX obviously was similar to the PAXs. It's also a good chance to try, that was in the UK, so it's a good way to like try a, a new market, if that makes sense to you. Um, if you want developers to show their games at conventions or you want to show your game at somewhere, like, it needs to be cost effective. I mean, I hope everyone in this room is relatively money conscious. If you're not money conscious, I mean, awesome. Continue to not be money conscious. <laughs> but we're all trying to get there still. Uh, it doesn't have to be games only. Like I said, at South By, we did a talk and had a pretty good time doing that, and it was a good chance to sort of spread the word in a way that wouldn't have made sense with a mega booth otherwise. Secret question. This is not an email that I ever have actually received, but I think it's a really important question. Um, why is it not the right time to do a mega booth? I've just noticed that in large font, that gray is slightly darker than that gray. All right, cool. Um, so four reasons I can think of that it's not the right time is one, you don't have a game yet. Two, money is tight. Three, the game is a long way from being ready to show. Four, your game is not compelling. And then five is like, if it's all of the above, um, you need more to work, like, spend more time with yourself working on it or your team before you blow it open to people. Um, to go through all of these, if you don't have a game yet, it's, we don't really, we have never not, we've never shown a developer and not their game, so that's a very, very, like, <laughs> base level thing. If you, find a way to submit to us. I think you have to attach a build, so I guess if you attach a build of someone else's game and try to submit, I hope that we'd work that out and it wouldn't happen. Um, if you've got a really cool idea, people are going to want to play it, but if they can't play it, they're probably going to forget about it, and you probably don't have a marketing budget that competes with 
you know, huge triple A's that maintain hype and build awareness and do things like that. Uh, having a functional prototype of your game is probably the like, ideal ambassador for the concept until it, the ideal ambassador becomes the obviously finished game. Uh, if money is tight, that's not going to exclude you from the possibility of ever showing in a mega booth or anything like that. But I mean, we do our best to negotiate low costs for space, equipment, yada, yada, yada. Like, we work very hard to try and make it possible for developers. But everything adds up. And I mean, we t I think I have it here. Yeah. We recommend budgeting about $5,000 if you're going to show your game at something like PAX. And none of, none of that really is money that, like, weird skimming off the top or anything. Again, I hope the people who were standing before can attest to that later, but um, these things just cost a stupid, stupid amount of money. And so you have to be really serious about them. And the good, the good thing about that is that most people who are at a show like that are pretty hardwired at what they want to do with it, because they've had to take a big chunk out of their budget and decide to do it. Um, if your game is a long way from being ready to show, this is something you might not be aware of because you're working on it and you're sick of looking at it and you really want other people to look at it. But it might not be ready to do that. And if you ever do submit to us and we tell you that we don't think it's ready to show, um, we're not telling you like because we don't like you or anything. We're telling you because we don't think it's like safe <laughs> for you to show it yet. Like, want to make sure you do a really make a really good first impression. Uh, the stress of planning a booth space at a convention, again, I hope those people can cover that, is really not something that I recommend until your game is ready to blow people away. Please ask those people who were standing earlier, and I hope they can tell you that it's a kind of a nightmare planning an event. <laughs> That's how we got involved in this. Uh, what have we got here? Your game is not compelling. This one is what it is. We want to show things that are compelling. They don't have to be good in a classical sense. Um, but there has to be a strong reason for why somebody would want to see it. Um, one of our criteria in our submissions is company, which is often used for things like um, if we have a really young student team apply, and the game is, I mean, not a great game, and it's probably never going to like make a million bucks or anything, but the team are going to learn so much from being at an event and possibly from being surrounded by, in our mega booth areas, there's like, I don't know, 60 to 70 development teams. So if you assume there's like at least one person from the team there, and there's usually like three or four, that's a lot of people they're going to be surrounded by who have all been working in games for a various amount of time and all have a level of experience that hopefully can rub off and inspire them somewhat. Um, lastly, all of the above. If this one is striking a chord with you, I'll happily talk with you, maybe like over lunch or something, about why it might make sense. If any of these do that, if this one is like, oh yeah, I don't actually have any of these things, it's probably good to wait. I would wager like six to 12 months before you consider the idea of showing it at an event. And that's not a mega booth thing, more like in general. Um, someone did mention full indie earlier. Like, if you live in a local city where you're fortunate enough to have a huge development community, just show your game there for a bunch of times because those people will be more than happy to tell you that it's a good idea or you know, you really need to, like, take it to L.A. or I don't know where people take games, I don't know. But. <laughs> all right, question time. Thanks for listening to all of that. I made sure to leave some time for questions, but before we start those, I'd like to point out a few handy links. Number one is my Twitter, so you can publicly send me very tiny emails. Um, second one is my email address, so you can send me private long form emails. Uh, the third one is the Megaboost Twitter handle, which you can use and tell everyone about how exciting and informative this talk was. This website will let you learn what the Indie Megaboost is if you've just realized you've no idea. Uh, the, the, what is this, the one, two, three, four, five, is our mailing list link. Uh, this is our Steam Curator page. If now you're thinking, am I on that Steam Curator page? <laughs> you can click that. And then this last one leads to an FAQ on our submissions, which will give you a lot of deep information. Um, that's it. Let's do some questions. Also, I'm not Snoop Lion, in case you're getting really jazzed right now and you can't totally see the stage, but it's not me. <laughs> All right. Someone asked me something. Oh, let's applaud for Let's applaud yeah. first. Thank you so much. <laughs>
All right, questions, go to the mic. I've also never heard any Snoop Lion songs, so. They're pretty good. Okay. <laughs> uh, so is there any difference for applying to the, in, the mini indie mega booth? Mm -hmm. uh, could you list them off? The differences in the application process, yeah, or? as well as like what kind of games ex ex or, uh, get ex accepted. And, and yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, so the reason that we have the mega booth and the mini booth is like one part of a larger whole kind of thing. Um, is that with the mini booth, it often comes down to things like the current state of the game, like maybe it's very early. Um, the mini booth tends to be a smaller, quicker experience. We'd, like, we tend to get mobile games there, but we don't only put mobile games in the mini booth. I mean, if something seems cool, we'll put it in a full booth space. Um, the mini booth is a little cheaper, so again, it tends to favor like those hypothetical student teams I was talking about earlier. Um, the mini booth is the most, I think, cost-effective way outside of like being in the PAX 10 or having another publisher show your game for you. Um, so if you're doing it on your own, that's kind of the best way that you can do it. Cool, no worries. Come on, all of you. I have a very hard question. Yes. Uh, so what do you think people get out of showing at Mega Booth? Everything. <laughs> now, um, what do you think they get? Uh, so, as opposed to not showing with us, like going another route? Uh, as opposed to probably not showing, I mean. OK. Um, as opposed to not spending that $5,000 in the three days. And, absolutely. Um, or, well, two weeks or however long. Yeah, and spending all the time preparing your build, like stuff like that. Um, the big benefit of showing with the Mega Booth is that we've managed to carve a whole a niche, a whole niche, in events where people want to come see our games. Like they don't. They, they, if you show your game anywhere else during these events, chances are someone will discover it and they'll see it. But people will come to PAX or EGX or whatever and say, oh, there's a Mega Booth area. Well, let's go see what's there. Um, and that was kind of a, it's like being a fortunate coincidence of us setting this whole thing up because when the Mega Booth started, it was just very hard to show your game at events at all. Whereas now we've created enough demand and proof that existed that now everyone's showing anyway. So. Yeah. One of the good things we get from a lot of developers is two things would be one is playtesting. It's very obvious. You suddenly have a, what, like 80,000 people that are going to see your game and tell you all the particular discrete ways that they don't like what you've done with it, <laughs> which is good. Uh, the other one is that you get to meet and hang out with, you know, like those like 60, 70 developers that are there for the weekend that are standing right beside you and everyone's kind of sharing the same experience and you know, it's like a, a heart moment. So yeah, that's what I would say. I have a question. I was just wondering if you're not a game developer and you would like to become more involved in the Indie Mega Booth, is there any like volunteering opportunities or like how can you help Indie Mega Booth aside from being a developer? Sure. Um, yeah, we have a, a volunteer form on our site for all the events. That's essentially, if you're interested in going, let us know. Um, we have tiers of, I mean, our, our decision process for volunteers is very, very immediate. It's like, do you want to volunteer? Yes. Do we have the ability to give you a badge? Yes. Please come and volunteer with us. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we have, a lot of people get involved with volunteering even when they are developers. Um, some of our favorite Vancouver developers have even volunteered with us in the past. Dan Jacobson. He's one. He's here, right? Yeah. So yeah, just get in touch. And you can send me an email if you want. And let me know. All right, thank you. Thank you.